Thank you, CS, and good morning, colleagues and friends. And I will start where the CS alluded to about the weather. We wouldn't be living in paradise if we didn't get blessings from above. So when it comes, we take them gladly. And because we're inside today, we can um, allow the rain to go and make sure that Bermuda continues to bloom as we expect it to be. But good morning to you all. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you here this morning. And I'm delighted to have you at the fabulous Rosewood Tuckers Point Hotel. What a wonderful property. And perhaps if we finish this meeting in time, we can all go play a, a round of golf at the wonderful golf course here. Before I start in earnest, I'd like to acknowledge the recent election victories over the past uh, number of months, uh, first starting with Montserrat. I look forward to working with the Premier Donaldson Romeo and welcome the Deputy Premier uh, to the island. And it's great to have you here. Congratulations on your victory. And to the Chief Minister of Anguilla, Victor Banks, uh, who is re represented by the Minister of Social Development and um, Minister of Social Development, Evan McNeil Rogers. Welcome and congratulations on your victory. And to uh, my good friend, Premier Smith of BVI, congratulations on your victory uh, early in June. Um, welcome, welcome back. And uh, the Premier and I enjoyed a uh, conference together a couple of weeks ago in Toronto. It's always nice to see you. Great to have you in Bermuda. My friends, uh, the, the gracious hospitality that was afforded to us last year by Premier McLaughlin in the Cayman Islands uh, will be hard for us to follow, but it is my hope that you will find Bermuda welcoming, beautiful, and so irresistible that you will find your way back again to help our tourism product. Uh, it's great to have you here, and we look forward to continuing the tradition of the pre-JMC. It's been a year since we last met in the Cayman Islands, and each of us as territories have faced continued economic headwinds, which continue to slow the pace of the recovery that we like. I say these challenges have tested our democracies and our ability to navigate uh, our people safely through the very choppy waters of a recession. Our meetings this week are held against a backdrop of cautious growth in the United States, certainly pockets of turmoil in the EU and complex tourism dynamics which we face in our region uh, in recent days. Added to all of this, we have the social issues that occupy our domestic agendas on a daily basis, including the threats in some territories of the gang lifestyle, interesting changes and challenges in healthcare costs, and the abilities of governments to provide relief for the most vulnerable of our people. However, friends, I would like to suggest that there is cause for much hope within the territories. Each of us, in our own ways, continues to punch well above our weight on the international level. And this is something which we are all justifiably proud of and something that we must continue to do if we're going to survive and take care of our people's needs. Irrespective of our diverse economic interests, we have to keep in mind that there is strength in unity. That unity is increasingly important in our relationship with the UK government. Recently strengthened by a clear majority in Parliament, Prime Minister Cameron is at liberty to examine policies afresh, and so it, it is vitally important for us to be in harmony on the issues that affect us as territories. This is particularly so in regards to the issue of beneficial ownership. In regards to Bermuda, we have and will continue to make a strong case for our compliance with international best practice and ensure sound regulation as an offshore business jurisdiction. Our regime is robust, and I'm confident that if we repeat it often enough, those outside the region will accept our position and certainly understand and support our position. One of the lessons that I have learned is that in terms of managing outside pressures on these matters, it is vitally important that we correct information head on and immediately. The importance of engaging directly with those who form opinions and make regulations cannot be overestimated. It is cri critical that our ministers of finance and our technical officers, as well as all of those who work with them, are well versed in all areas of this and are prepared to clearly, forcefully articulate our position. And that's something that my colleague, the Deputy Premier and the Minister of Finance has done. These matters of international scope are but one facet of the work that we do as leaders of our overseas territories. At home, we are faced with a domestic agenda that certainly demands our equal attention. 
The expectations of our people have been disappointed by the challenges, in some cases, of unemployment and inadequate revenue. The task, as you, you all well know and experience, is very difficult. We cannot simply balance budgets through redundancies or cost cutting without regard to the impact. The people affected by either of these actions has nowhere else to go. They can't go to the next state, the next county, or the next district. So we have to find creative ways to reduce spending and balance budgets while at the same time restoring growth to our economies. These economic and fiscal challenges also have social consequences. And we all know how hard it is to build morale in a place or period where there is little or no economic growth. But our task as leaders is to remain committed to policies that we believe will achieve growth while inspiring our people to play their part and do all we can to support them and support those citizens in need. Now, a couple of moments ago, I spoke of the need for unity. I believe it is a theme which bears repeating again. We must continue to strengthen our sharing of knowledge and information. Where we have had success, we should be open to sharing it with each other on how we have learned from that success. Where we have failed, we should also discuss that. In issues of security, health care, domestic policy, all of these areas, we have a wealth of information and we should share it with our colleagues. After all, we are only an email or a phone call away. As we prepare for this year's joint ministerial conference later in the year, let us approach the UK in a position of strength. Let us present a united front in those areas that matter to all of us. Let us work together to represent the best interests of the people we were elected to serve and to guard against the pressures that would otherwise threaten those interests. My friends, I hope you consider Bermuda your home for the short time that you are here. And let the beauty of the island and the warmth of our people foster a spirit of unity of purpose in our deliberations. We have critical and important work to do. And I look forward to a productive two days as we build relationships and get ready for the JMC later this year.